This is the Apple Watch Ultra 2, and I took it on a three mile hike down to Crabtree Falls here in North Carolina. Tested waypoint, compass, the elevation, and I even started liking that modular ultra watch face. By the way, I'm recording this on the iPhone 15 Pro Max, just in regular video, no ProRes, and I wanna talk about the 5X camera lens that I used here on the trail. So here's 12 seconds of obligatory drone footage because it looks cool, and then we'll get into it. So for the past year, I had the first generation Apple Watch Ultra. Now I'm no adventurer. You can see my non-adventurer review up here. I'll put the link in the description. The deepest dive I did was about three feet in my pool, but this time I actually decided to take it out and go on a hike. So we went to Crabtree Falls. It's a three mile hike, difference of about 400 plus feet in elevation. So I got to test the elevation, waypoints, backtracking, and more. Well, there's not a ton of differences between Apple Watch Ultra 1 and 2. One of the big ones is on-device Siri, thanks to the S9 chip. Now you can also do Siri, even if you don't have any cellular coverage. In this entire hike, I had no cellular, no data. Everything had to be on-device. When I asked the Apple Watch Ultra 2 to start a backtrack, and to start a hiking workout, it happened really fast. And again, everything's happening on device. So it should be quicker than on the Apple Watch Ultra 1. So if you are one who is out of cellular coverage a lot, maybe you do some hiking or you're just out of cell signal, having that on device Siri is actually really helpful. It's also helpful for starting things like Backtrack because it's a couple taps away in the Compass app. So just being able to ask Siri is really convenient. Aside from the S9 chip, another difference is the display brightness. It goes up to 3000 nits as opposed to the Ultra 1's 2000 nits. And while I wasn't in a very dark environment, I did notice that the Apple Watch face seemed bright at all times, had no trouble reading it, even on that modular Ultra watch face. Which let's talk about that modular Ultra. When I first saw it, I wasn't crazy about it because of the font of that clock. But I will say if you're doing a hike or workouts, especially outdoorsy type things, the modular Ultra watch face gives you a ton of data right there on screen. I really do love the elevation measurement that's on the left and right sides of the watch face. And I got to see that difference from the beginning of the hike to the middle where we went down over 400 feet in elevation. And with those dual GPS chips, which the Apple Watch Ultra had as well, I found the compass to be really accurate. And with that modular ultra watch face, you can have the compass right there in the middle. You can set waypoints very easily from a complication and jump into the workout, see your activity rings. It was actually a really nice watch face to have. Now let's talk about some of those hiking features. Again, this was my first hiking workout. Here's the proof in my badge. One unfortunate moment was when we got down to the waterfalls, we stopped moving as much, and so the workout paused on my Apple Watch. I forgot to resume it when we actually started climbing back up, and there was this whole section in the middle of the hike where I actually lost that data. So I don't have that very bottom elevation data as part of the workout, nor do I have those exercise minutes. But I do have my soreness today to prove to me that I did the whole thing. Also, thanks to those GPS chips, you get a really cool map once you do these workouts. And this is even just for an outdoor walk you're doing at home. And you can see the entire path that you took during that workout. And this was also my first time using the backtrack feature on the Apple Watch Ultra. You start it, you can walk, hike, wherever you're going. And then once you're ready to actually go back to where you started, you stop backtracking and you can delete those steps or choose retrace your steps. And once you choose to retrace your steps, it'll actually show you where the last waypoint is. It's really cool moving your Apple Watch around. You can see the little arrow showing you which direction to walk. So you're actually going back through the waypoints. Really cool. And of course, if you're an Apple Watch Ultra user, the generation two is no different when it comes to battery life. It's amazing battery life. Had about 95% battery when we started the hike and even running it for over two hours, doing a workout, all the elevation measurements, waypoint, backtracking. I was only down to about 60 or 70% when we were done with the hike. I'll be honest, I was pretty exhausted, so didn't look exactly at it, but looked at it on the way home. Also, while we were on the hike, I took my iPhone 15 Pro Max, and it was my first time really getting to test out that 5X lens. And let me just say, take a look at these side-by-side -side photos from the 1X lens on the 15 Pro Max to the 5X. This was incredible. Being able to punch this far in optically and still have such a clear and high quality picture is amazing. This picture of my son in front of the waterfall, you really can barely see him in the 1X photo. Hop over to that 5X lens right out of the camera and it looks amazing. Now your experience may be different, especially if you're in low light conditions, but if you're outside in environments like this where you just really wanna get closer to the subject, that 5X lens is awesome, let me just say. I also took a number of action mode shots as we were on the hike. And while it did yell at me that there wasn't enough light most of the time, it had some great smoothing and stabilization for those action mode shots. And I can use them right here in the video. Oh, and one final word, I actually got the trail loop with this Apple Watch Ultra Generation 2. I've long since been a solo loop user in the Apple Watch Ultra, which I have an entire video on. Yes, it's very neat, but basically whatever size solo loop you are on the series eight and nine, you have to get one size smaller for the Apple Watch Ultra if you wanna try one of those loops. 
So for me, the trail loop is great. I also love my Ocean Band, which I've had on my Apple Watch Ultra 1 for the past year. That one's a little more bulky and less comfortable. And so if you were doing outdoorsy things, especially hiking, I do love the trail loop. And of course, I think the solo loop is great in pretty much any situation. So overall, if you were looking at Ultra 1 versus Ultra 2, I have to say that biggest difference being on-device Siri and its speed is noticeable in some situations, especially if you're going to be outdoors, doing hiking or other outdoor activities. The brightness on the display is noticeable. And so if that's something where you felt like you struggled to see the Apple Watch face before, the Ultra 2 is very bright in all situations. And if you are the outdoorsy type doing lots of hikes and other outdoor exercises, the Apple Watch Ultra 2 just gives you so much data. You can do it right on the watch face with that modular Ultra watch face. Honestly, it's just fun to use. And while going up that much elevation is definitely a challenge, it's fun to see it on the Apple Watch face and in the workout afterwards. Just make sure you don't keep your workout pause once you start actually going back up the trail. If you have any questions about the Apple Watch Ultra 2 or the iPhone 15 Pro Max camera, leave them down in the comments below. Hit the like button and subscribe. Lots of videos on the USB-C port for the iPhone 15 Pro. And I have a bunch of leather cases for my iPhone 15 Pro Max coming. You can check out my part one video above or in the description. But I'm going to do a massive comparison with a bunch of cases. Thank you for the comments. I got a lot of the cases that you suggested, so we'll be checking them out soon. So again, hit subscribe so you don't miss that. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you in the next video.